In this video, I'm going to discuss customized datum reference frames. So this isn't something that gets used very often, but it's good to know, and it's good to know how it works because you're kind of doing it whether you know it or not. So whenever you specify datum references, they are going to be taking away degrees of freedom in the order they're specified. So what are degrees of freedom? We can think of them as all the ways things can move in space. So there's six degrees of freedom, three in translation, three in rotation. So if we look at a Cartesian coordinate system like this one, an object can move up, down, left and right, and it can rotate about all of those axes. Whenever we're inspecting for location, all of the degrees of freedom need to be taken away to get an accurate measurement. I've got an example here a simple block with three planar datums on the sides, a pretty typical setup. We've got four holes positioned to A, B, and C. Let's take a look at what degrees of freedom get taken away when we set up to inspect. So datum A is the largest surface. I'll choose the, this side of the part. When we push it up against a surface plate or an angle block or whatever our inspection equipment is, like so, we've taken away three degrees of freedom. The part cannot move this way, you know, toward or against us. That's translation in Z. It also cannot rotate this way or this way. So we've taken away rotation in X and Y. So if we go to our chart here, we've taken away translation in Z and rotation in X and Y. Now, to explicitly put that in the feature control frame, we add brackets behind the datum. And I'll specify Z, U, V. Now, there's no reason to do this unless you're changing the degrees of freedom that a, a feature takes away, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So we've taken away three degrees of freedom. Now. We're going to push the part up against datum B. So I'll hold it against the board. I'm going to push it up against the bottom. I'm going to push it up against the bottom of my board here. Now, the part is locked in translation and Y, right? It can't move up and down because it's against here. And now it cannot rotate like this anymore, right? So we've taken away one translation and one rotational degree of freedom. So specify here, we've taken away Y and W. Now there's only one more degree of freedom left. The part can still move this way. So when we push it up against the angle plate or whatever inspection equipment is, C is gonna take away the final degree of freedom, which is translation in X. So this is just explicit, something that already happens whether you know it or not. Why would you want to change the degrees of freedom? It can happen if you have a feature of size or a regular feature of size used as a datum that takes away too many degrees of freedom. So the example I have here, we got a block with a square hole serving as datum B, a round or a hole serving as datum C, and then four holes in the middle that are positioned to A, B, and C. Now, when we go to check this part, say we're inspecting the position, A takes away three degrees of freedom, just like the part we were doing before, but now B, because it's a square feature, takes away three degrees of freedom as well. We actually don't need datum C. The problem with this though, say this part is like a stamped part that's gonna fit over a square and a pin, the variation in the profile of the square can affect the location of that other pin. So we were gonna wanna control it here and here. To do that, we have to change the degrees of freedom. So what I'm gonna do is remove the rotational degree of freedom from datum B. So I'll remove it in both feature control frames. Now, datum C is gonna control that rotational degree of freedom. 
So we're saying when we set up, right, A takes away Z, U, and V, three degrees of freedom. B is only going to take away X and Y, so the part can't move up and down or left and right, but it's free to rotate as far as datum B is concerned. Datum C comes in and it locks the rotation. So it makes datum C functional. The way you would check this part is hopefully all of these would be at MMC. I didn't add the MMC symbol to any of the datums just because these feature control frames get really long. But the idea would be that you can drop it on two pins. So even though this is a profile, when it's in the feature control frame, it can be checked at MMC. If the part fits, you can check the holes and you're good to go. So that's what I mean by modifying the degrees of freedom. Now, again, this doesn't happen all that often, but it's good to know which degrees of freedom you're taking away. Uh, if you had dimensioned the part the first way, datum C would have had no purpose, right? You wouldn't want to put it in the position if it's not taking away any degrees of freedom. So that's it for this video. Uh, I just wanted to discuss customized datum reference frames. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below.